Hello, I'm Roseanne Summerson, president of RISD. In our school's 142-year history, we have never experienced anything akin to this pandemic. Within a matter of days, everything we planned for our spring semester was turned upside down in the middle of the term. We made the wrenching decision to call students who were studying abroad back to campus and then suddenly had to shut the school and help shell-shocked students pack up their lives and work within a few short days before dispersing around the globe. Faculty, many of whom excel at studio-engaged learning, suddenly had to reinvent ways to achieve their learning objectives using distance strategies. But as singular, disorienting, and disturbing as these events have been, I found aspects of the past few weeks to be profoundly encouraging. When faced with one's whole world rocked upside down, the essence of what truly matters rises to the top. Creativity, adaptability, and resourcefulness present remarkable and unexpected ways to recognize what is most important. There's a kind of clarity and commitment that validates who we are and what we want or even need to accomplish. And I believe that no one navigates difficult situations and uncertainty better than artists and designers. Because making things or making ideas that have never existed before is essential to their work. This moment is one that is a giant reset in so many ways for cultures across the globe. And I believe it is also going to create a fantastic set of transformations for education. Many historians and writers have observed that pandemics, wars, and natural disasters often create a new kind of life force that instantaneously sparks some kind of change that moves a society into a new place, a kind of spontaneous evolution. Without this head-on collision with forced change, some of these advancements might never happen. Now, I don't want in any way to discount the intense current suffering for so many with illness or lost loved ones or financial devastation. These are real and horrible consequences. But there is another frame that begs us at this moment to think together and to figure out how to evolve something that's the next best great way to live and to educate each other on this planet. And I see indications everywhere of that kind of unexpected evolution. In a few short weeks, whole aspects of society have leapt a decade ahead of where we were before the virus hit. People are connecting across the globe in ways that they never have previously. Post-COVID, we're going to have a RISD faculty that is even more versatile and creative in their teaching methods. Not only have they sped light years ahead in their technology training and use and implementation, but as truly gifted teachers would, they have rethought their curricula in highly stimulating and evocative ways. And that, frankly, is exhilarating. When one teaches in an institution like RISD, or leads it for that matter, and you know you have an exemplary model of education producing hugely successful students, you don't always feel the need for profound change. Sometimes you may even resist it. But with COVID-19, resistance became instantly futile. This moment required that faculty and academic leadership demonstrate resiliency, the sort that we promote in our art and design education models. We expect unbridled creativity from our students, but what happens when we invert that expectation into our own practices? We found ourselves addressing open-ended questions about things we had never encountered before and had to quickly leap into uncharted territory and succeed. Adversity intensified the efforts that all of us enacted to protect our community, facilitate the exits of students at lightning speed, and reinvent teaching that had been designed around place-based making in sophisticated facilities. As creative faculty will do, they immediately started conceiving compelling methods to replicate as much as possible the studio learning experience while students sheltered remotely. Sean Salstrom, a faculty member in the glass department, for example, sent students in his optics class a kit that included a prism, a spherical lens, a high-end laser pointer, and a telescope with a cell phone camera mount. 
Now they can spend the second half of the semester studying optics firsthand, researching and observing the interaction of light with space and material, which can easily be done in the constrained studio environment of self-isolation. One student used his laser pointer with a multi-point diffuser and aimed it at the steam rising from the pot of boiling water for his pasta dinner. The resulting captured image of the effect was stunning. And he never might have had that idea had he not been confined to his home, to his own new environment. So that this class will still have a sense of learning as a group, the professor has also arranged on an upcoming evening for all his students to use their telescopes to collectively and simultaneously view and photograph the moon in an assignment modeled on one undertaken last year by the Event Horizon Telescope team that collected data for making an amazing image of a black hole. In the film animation video department, Gina Kamensky designed what she calls the dirt cheap down shooting stand for wayward animators, a handy tool made out of a cardboard moving box. She created a step-by-step -step PDF tutorial complete with images and drawings, which is now assisting her students scattered around the world. This improvisational learning is as valuable as the products themselves. A number of faculty have altered their courses to give students a taste of the kind of work they'll encounter in their professional lives, like teaching them modeling and other techniques needed to produce a winning entry in a competition. Suzanne Matthew, assistant professor in the Landscape Architecture Department, has reconfigured her course, Urban Systems, as a mock competition for schemes to reconnect a river corridor with the nearby city of Baltimore. Course and critics will serve as the jury. Students, I am told, are enjoying the new challenges that these novel approaches present. And in many areas, faculty are engaging critics who would not typically be available to travel and review work in person. This will all end up being the start of dramatic advancement of this institution into the future, fostering new ways of engaging research, of collaboration, and of experiential learning. And while we are only a few weeks into this pedagogic shift, students are embracing these new teaching strategies. While some are finding it difficult to adapt, others are making dramatic discoveries. These moves could be considered counter to what the RISD experience is perceived to be with its reliance on the studio. But I see that students are obtaining the core essential of a RISD education, working with world-class faculty to confront the unknown with creative daring and agility in order to skillfully traverse periods of uncertainty with skill, with invention, and with individuality. And maybe this will transform how other people think about an art and design education, opening their eyes to the exceptional problem-tackling capacities of those with these learned competencies. These demonstrations of ingenuity and determination and fellowship here at RISD and elsewhere in the world have convinced me that when historians look back on this moment, they will consider the global response to the, this pandemic as the true beginning of the 21st century. What has also fascinated me is to see how the changes that some faculty had already made in their pedagogic approaches in order to be more proactive around issues of sustainability and human-focused design, have found new manifestations in the remote environment. For example, Lisa Morgan, our head of apparel design, has in recent years urged students to think more critically about resources and production and fashion's overall effect on the environment. Remote teaching has brought this to bear dramatically, forcing students to utilize the tools and materials around them, like using cardboard and sheets for draping, returning to hand sewing, and developing ideas based on the environments in which they live. Now, she feels students will be also forced to define for themselves what it means to be a fashion designer in a post-COVID world. And because they will be showing their work remotely, they will have to devise original ways of communicating their ideas and presenting themselves to their industry and the world beyond. Demanding and exhausting as this experience has been for all of us, there is no question that it has been transformative. 
in her captivating study of natural disasters called A Paradise Built in Hell, Rebecca Solnit observes that our response to disaster gives us nothing less than a glimpse of who else we ourselves may be and what else our society could become. And she adds, the recovery of this purpose and closeness without crisis or pressure is the great contemporary task of being human. I couldn't agree more. As traumatic as the events of the past few weeks have been, they have been incredibly fertile for reappraising our capacities and imagining the world anew. What's more, this period of confinement has personally focused many of us on resource, how resource reliant we have become and how oblivious we are to patterns of lifestyle that we've now been forced to alter dramatically in our current state. Though living at a distance, people are consciously building new connections. Increased use of technology is luring us to simpler analog experiences. Jigsaw puzzle sales are through the roof, victory gardens are again becoming a thing, and baking bread is trending. And not everyone has the ability to take advantage of moments like that. And another critical topic that deeply troubles me concerns revelations around inequity that have risen to the surface in newly visible ways. The issues of just societies and climate crisis are key pillars of our strategic plan at RISD, and we are learning a lot through the immediacy of this crisis and its global implications. This is a topic for a whole second conversation, and one which I would be very eager to be included in. One important final consideration is in response to a frequently new posited question about education in general. Will the ubiquitous adaptation to remote learning weaken or even destroy the current model of higher education? I answer in our case with a resounding no. To the contrary, our faculty will return to our model more equipped with new tools for communication and collaboration, expanding the reach of the classroom. And I'm confident that many faculty will have gained a deeper understanding and more contemporary sense of what defines the nuclei of their courses. Along the way, they will have discovered a host of new resources, such as newly developed digital tools from our museum, our library, and nature lab. For all of us, this moment in time is one that calls for great creativity, resilience, and inventiveness all hallmarks of RISD education, and for that matter, arts education overall. But beyond any single institution, let's hope that we all can be students of a sort, learning a greater sense of purpose through nimbleness, self-awareness, and compassion going forward. On a final note, these events have had huge financial implications for RISD. We have taken every measure possible to support all of our students dealing with the impacts of COVID-19, but more funds are needed. If you would like to lend your support, please consider contributing to RISD Student Emergency Fund at engage.risd.edu. Thank you so much for listening and please be well. Thank you.